Welcome to the MOOC's course Transport Phenomena of Non-Newtonian Fluids. This is the introduction video of the course. So, in general transport phenomena include three different types of processes, transport of momentum where we discuss uh, problems related to the fluid flow, then transport of energy where we discuss in general uh, transport of uh, energy or heat those kind of details we discuss, then transport of chemical species where in general we study details about the mass transfer etc. those things we study. Then why should we study them together? Actually in general as a separate course fluid mechanics, heat transfer and mass transfer we might have already studied at UG level. So then why should we need to study them together all these processes where the transfer of uh, fluid uh, energy and then uh, species are taking place because uh, in general they occur simultaneously because these things whatever the transport of uh, momentum, energy and then species transfer in general in industries they occur simultaneously. If not all at least the two processes in general they occur, right. So having individual transport process or the having individual transport of momentum or energy or species transfer is a kind of exception but not a rule, right. Then other reason is that uh, these uh, mathematical approaches that are used to describe this uh, transport of momentum, energy and then species transfer individually they are similar, they are similar to each other. Also um, when we apply some certain kind of mathematical approaches to obtain the uh, governing equation for this, uh, for this uh, transport of momentum, energy and then species, what we understand, what we realize that we realize that these equations are similar, they are not same but they are similar. Since these equations, the governing, governing equations are the, to some extent similar to each other, their solution method should also be similar to uh, each other in general. And then finally, most importantly, the molecular mechanism that is leading to the transport of momentum or transport of energy or transport of uh, chemical species is same in all the cases. That is the reason, you know, studying these, uh, all these uh, uh, processes together is going to be much more useful and then close to the realistic problems, okay. Then uh, if you have the knowledge of transport phenomena, it is going to be very much useful for you to design uh, unit operations and then unit processes of any chemical plant. Not only design, the controlling or the tuning of the operational conditions that also one can effectively do if uh, one, ha one is having the knowledge about the transport phenomena of uh, momentum, heat and then species transfer. So some of the examples where transport phenomena or transport of momentum, energy and then species transfer occur in general in chemical engineering are uh, given in the below here like you know flow through pipes, flow off and then heat transfer from cylinders and spheres to the fluids, diffusion of species from falling film, then evaporation of uh, column of a liquid, then boundary layer flows and so on. So like that if you keep on listing you can find out n number of applications where transport phenomena knowledge is very essential from chemical engineering point of view. Further this transport phenomena occur at three different levels, uh, at uh, macroscopic level, at uh, microscopic level and at molecular level, right. Let us say you have a reactor system in which there is a reactant B is already there and then another reactant A is continuously added at certain flow. This reactor is provided with the heating element and then also with uh, kind of provision of steering so that the reaction between A and B is taking place and then you get a product C. The product C from the product stream, the C is separated out and then un unreacted A and B are recycled back. This is the system that you have. So in general at the macroscopic level what you do? you take the details of what is happening or the, how these quantities or properties are there at the inlet and at the exit stream, those details only you take at the macroscopic level. But in the case of microscopic level, you also take the interior details of the fluid mixture, what is happening to the fluid mixture within the reactor, how effectively mixing is taking place, how effectively heat transfer is taking place is the concentration, temperature and the velocity gradient is uniform everywhere or not. If it is not uniform, how it is varying spatially with respect to the location and then with respect to time as well. Those details in general we take in the case of a microscopic level, okay. But within the microscopic level if you take the specified region, small small region in the fluid mixture, 
then what you have uh, within that small region again n number of molecules would be there. So the structure of molecules may be playing role and uh, their interaction may also playing role in general. So at the molecular level also there is a transport phenomena. Okay? So at these three different levels, different scales are there. Okay? So in the ones and the macroscopic level, we have a kind of uh, scales of you know in centimeters to meters, something like that. In microscopic level scales you take in some millimeters or in some micrometers range. In the case of a molecular level, you take the scales at uh, some nanometers or something like that in that range. Okay? So, but in all these three uh, ranges or the at all three different levels, the transport phenomena, whatever is occurring, all the conservation laws are going to play essential role. Okay? So, at the macroscopic level, we take uh, uh, or we develop equations called macroscopic uh, balance equations only. Then uh, we concerned with the quantities or properties at the entry and exit points only. We are not worried about what is happening to the fluid inside the system. And then length scale is also order of centimeter or meter. In the case of microscopic level, we take uh, interior details of the system that is how uh, the fluid mixture is, uh, the properties within the fluid mixture is changing from one location to the other location. Okay? So those things we consider within the equipment. Then develop equations of change for uh, mass, momentum, energy within the small region and we apply or uh, we integrate. Then length scale for this case is order of uh, microns to centimeters some in general or some millimeters only. Then molecular level. Fundamental understanding in terms of molecular structure and then interaction forces are going to be developed by the transport phenomena at molecular level. Then this molecular level information is in general more useful for the theoretical physicist or physical chemist. Length scale is in general 1 to 1000 nanometers. Then all three levels of description what happens this uh, conservation loss, conservation of mass, conservation of momentum and conservation of uh, energy is going to play essential role. In this course that is transport phenomena of non-Newtonian fluids, we are taking the microscopic level okay, where continuum hypothesis is valid without any restrictions. Then why non-Newtonian fluids? Because if you take any process industry where the fluids are involved, you can find the non-Newtonian behavior is almost ubiquitous, like is almost ubiquitous, like something you know, you take a polymer industry, petroleum industry, food industry, cosmetic industry, beverages industry, cement industry, biological industry, mining industry, paints industry, pharmaceutical industry and so on and so. In all these industries, many of the processing materials or fluids, you know, they are displaying one or more type of non-Newtonian nature. That is the reason studying about the transport phenomena of non-Newtonian fluids is very much essential from chemical engineering viewpoint. Coming to the contents, first two weeks would be on the basics of non-Newtonian fluids. That is, uh, what are the types of non-Newtonian fluids, their classifications, uh, what are the models available for these non-Newtonian fluids. Then how to estimate their non-Newtonian behavior using the rheometers, etc. Those details would be studied in first two weeks. In the third weeks, we'll be discussing some basics of transport phenomena, like you know, what is continuum hypothesis, what is the difference between different types of derivatives, then deriving the conservation of uh, equations like equations of change for mass, momentum, energy, uh, for both isothermal and non-isothermal system, those things we discuss. Then fourth and fifth weeks we will be discussing the momentum transfer of non-Newtonian fluids. Sixth week is also on the momentum transfer of non-Newtonian fluids, but the geometry is like you know porous media, something like flow through packed bed or fluidized bed and then the fluid is non-Newtonian fluid, then how their performance is going to change, those details we are going to see in the week number six. Then next two weeks uh, we will be discussing heat transfer related problem, ninth week we will be discussing mass transfer related problems and then 10th and 11th week we will be discussing mass transfer combined with heat transfer and then chemical reactions etc. In the last week we will be discussing a few details about the boundary layer flows especially when the fluid is a non-Newtonian fluid. And then this course in general useful uh, to the MTech and PhD students of uh, chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, petroleum science and technology, 
polymer processing engineering, food engineering, material science and engineering, etc. related branches. In addition, it is also useful for the fourth year uh, B.Tech uh, students, final year B.Tech students as a kind of elective course for them as well. Coming to the references, we will be using several uh, references, several books as a references in this course. The list is given here. However, in individual uh, lectures, which book is followed for that particular lecture will also be given for each and every lecture. Thank you.